Okay, guys. We're, in this video, we're gonna do a, a practice problem on find the antiderivative of a function. So, which of the following is an anti, is an antiderivative of f of x? Is the quantity square root of one plus x to the third? Now, antiderivative is basically taking the integration of something. And when you take the integration of something, you're gonna have signs like these, or you can literally just take the integration itself. So in this case, we could try, because there's answers of both of them, where you have an integration and some that just look like it's the integration of the thing right on its, it's, an, it's the integration of the thing itself. What we could do here is we could try to take the integration of, we could try to take the integration of this thing by itself first and see where that brings us. So f of x is the same thing as um, 1 plus x to the third to the one-half power, and we integrate both sides. I guess you can also put dx here too. Then this would be big f of x, which is the antiderivative of f of x. And if we train rule this, it'll be one, two, we, raise the we raise the power by one, and then we divide by the new power, and we also divide by the chain rule as well, or divide by the derivative of the inside as well, which is kind of like the reverse chain rule. So this would be, so the derivative of the inside would be x, will be um, 3x squared because the highest power is of the, um, of the x to the third in here. So when we simplify this, it'll be 2, 2 thirds times that big part minus 3x squared, also plus c because there's, it's an indefinite integral. Now, this is the tricky part, because this, just this part over here, looks exactly like this one over here. This answer over here forgot to do, to do the reverse chain rule, but this neither of them are correct, because there's no plus c, which is quite shaky. So what that means is that, and you could probably just tell, if there's no plus c, if they ask for an antiderivative of an indefinite integral, and it's, it's a given, it's implied that it's, indef it's indefinite, because they didn't give any endpoints, then you could assume that there's a plus c. But in this case, these have endpoints. So if these two aren't correct, then what these these mean over here is that you kind of have to plug them in, and it's kind of like the second fundamental theorem of calculus, in a way. So let's take a look at let's take a close look at these. So what you want to do here in this case, because they're all zero. Um, just before we get a, before we go there, I just want to do a quick recap. So it'll be, if you want to plug this in, then if you want to plug these values in. In the second fundamental theorem of calculus, it's um. Actually, no, it's not even the second fundamental theorem of calculus in this. You're just plugging the values in. Right. No, no, no there, there is a. Value. No, so there is going to be a fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, there, there is going to be a second fundamental theorem of calculus in this, because the second fundamental theorem of calculus states that if you take the derivative of, if you take the derivative of like, let, let me let me. All right. So here's the fundamental theorem of calculus. If you take the and if you take the derivative of an antiderivative, it's going to look like ddx of the integration of. 0 to x to of like f of t dx. What you're going to get is f of x. I think I'm going to show this part later. But it's just, it's just going to give f of x because if you plug in this value here, if you just like use the first fundamental theorem of calculus where it's um f of b minus f of a, if you take the integration of this and you plug that into the f of t, what you get is, and you take the derivative of it again separately. So originally, just this part over here, you get f of big F of x minus big F of 0. And when you take the derivative of that again, what you get is this little value, this value over here. Little, actually, no. If you take the derivative of this again, because f of 0 is a constant, that'll cancel out. So we'll, I'll, we'll leave you just f of x. And that's what we have here. And another thing to pay attention to is, if you take the derivative, or like, because this is just f, this is x, and this is the x from the function, what happens if we have a variable here that's like 
u. I only take it with respect to d dx. In this case, we have to deal with implicit differentiation. So we'll, we'll still have f u minus f zero when we take the integration. But when we take the derivative of this with respect to f of x, what we're going to experience here is the chain rule. So the antiderivative of f would just be little f. So that'll be small f u. But then now you have to chain rule it, so it'll be times u prime, and this would be a constant, and that'll be negated. So what we have here is that if it's if the endpoint is not x, what you get is if, if it's some other value, you have to uh, multiply it by the derivative because of the chain rule that comes with taking the derivative of an antiderivative. And what we have here is f of u times u prime. So in this case, what we're trying to find here is which of these three val which of these three integrations will get us this value over here if we take the derivative of an antiderivative to get the original value. So let's take a look at each of these. Let's take a look at C first. If you if we were to plug this back in, it will be um hold up. I I might be skipping steps here but I'll just try to explain it's step by step to the best of my ability. So what we do here is if it's f of this is simplified first, so if we take the integration of this, it'll be f of the endpoint minus f of the beginning. And this will be this would just be hmm, it would just be also just another thing I just realized. Um, if we take the derivative, if we take the integration of something, and we take the and we take the derivative of it again, we're basically re reverting it back to its original value, like over here, where it's it's lowercase f, and so we're reverting it from lowercase f up to uppercase f, which is the antiderivative, and back to lowercase f. And the only thing that changes is the x value here. So take a look at all these examples; they all have the square root in them. And the only thing that's changing is the endpoints or the values that are being inputted. So t is just a general value of the function, but x is an actual endpoint end of the function. So in this case, if you're trying to find the anti if you're trying to get the antiderivative, if you're trying to get the yeah, antiderivative of the endpoint minus the initial point, it's and we take the derivative of that, it's going to be the same equation, or it's going to be the same function as the original, because you're just going back and forth from um, integration to derivative. So what we have here is, a, is the square root of, so what we're doing in short is just plugging this value up here into here, and this value into here. But in this case, the bottom value doesn't really matter because it's a constant, or like the values that don't have an x in there, or if it's just a constant value, they don't really matter because if you take the derivative of a constant, it just equals zero. So what we have here is the square root of 1 plus x to the third. I have to chain rule this too because it's inside, because if we take the derivative of this thing, the, the antiderivative becomes the regular equation, but we have to take the derivative of this part inside is here as well. So this would be times 3x squared. And this, for c, is not the same as this because you have to take the chain rule. So c is out d let's do this again it will, it will using the same steps here it'll be d dx of f of x cubed minus this okay and when we bring this down here it'll be the these two cancel out and what's left to be here which is actually no the original equation the original t value the, the, the original t value would be substituted by x cubed. Well, in this case, for c, the original t value is substituted for 1 plus x to the cubed. But in this case, we have to leave the 1 here because that's part of the original function. And this would be 1 plus, we substitute in the t for the x cubed here. And then again, we still have to take the chain rule of it, which would be. 3x squared because of this derivative here. And this is the same answer as this, and this is not matching the original equation, so this is wrong. Now, then again, we go out just do process of elimination and see that e is correct, 
but I'm going to show you how E is actually correct. So let's do E. Using the same system that we've done, it's just f of x, the endpoint, minus f of 0. The 0 is a constant, it cancels out. And we take the derivative of an antiderivative, oh, I'm not in frame. If we take the derivative of an antiderivative, we go back to the original value. But instead of having t be a generic value, we actually plug in the value of the endpoint here, which is x. It's kind of like substituting a value where instead of like, if you take like normal function, like an algebra 1 or something, if it's f of x, and you're trying to find f of 5, you just substitute in 5 for x. In this case, you're trying to substitute in t, which is the generic function value, for x. So, or in this case, in algebra 1, x would be the generic value. It could be anything. And you substitute in 5 for that, which is a solid value. In this case, t could be a value for anything. Uh, we substitute in x for that. So then, it would just be the generic f of x. It would just be the original f of x function. So what you get here is you substitute in the x in here for, substitute in the x in here for the t. So it would be 1 plus x to the third. And we take and we don't really, and the chain rule of this of from this endpoint value up here or just just over here because the bigger or we're a lot bigger here the deriv the the derivative of x is just one so we just multiply by one which is the same thing as one the square root of one plus x to the third and this is the same answer as the one we have up here so e is our correct answer.